Hi everyone. So you probably have heard the saying at some point in your life that if you can follow your passion at work, then you'll never actually work a day in your life. Well, what if we would say that actually sometimes following your passion can lead you to disappointment, to frustration, and maybe even to financial instability. Straight away though, we need to recognize that not everyone has a clear passion, and some people don't have a clear passion that can be uh, turned into a career. For example, you may love cooking, but maybe a chef's life isn't for you because you've got those responsibilities that are going to make it really difficult for you. Maybe you love art, but your family love your art, you love your art, but I'm not sure anyone else does. Certainly my art is appalling, but hey. And, or cycling, I love cycling. But now I'm a little bit too old to actually be a cyclist. And my passion is riding the bike, not mechanics or anything like that. So. First of all, we need to recognise whether your passion can actually be turned into a career. So the first question to ask is, can you turn it into a career? So you think you can, that's great. But you need to ask yourself these questions off the back of that. Is there a market out there for it? And are there enough people out there who are willing to use the services or the products that you create as part of your passion? Is there a clear path for monetizing the passion that you have? So the second question is, does your passion allow you to be financially stable? What's the competition like out there? Are there lots of people who are already providing and producing the stuff that you're passionate about? And will you be a very small fish in a very large pond? Are there people out there who are going to pay for your things? Is it financially stable? Is it a side hustle that you've already got that you think, oh, maybe I can turn this into my full-time living? Is the market saturated? Perhaps the most important question that you've got to ask yourself is that if you uh, look to monetize your passion, if you look to take your side hustle from being something you really enjoy doing on the side and make it uh, the way you're going to provide the living for yourself and for your family, then you've got to ask yourself is, does that bring so much stress with it that it stops being something you're passionate about and starts to be something that actually it's just a job. So we lose the whole you'll never work a day in your life because you're now working because the stress has just become all encompassing. Do you want to keep your passion a passion or do you want to turn it into something else? And is that something else going to be a job? But let's say we've turned our passion into our job. Now, how much of it is actually our passion and how much of it is actually the job. So you've got how, what percentage of loving what you do, what percentage has become actually a job. Now, we see this with people on YouTube who've been around for ages and they've made it their career and it was their dream and they're self-employed now, but now they've got this real stress of having to create content all the time. And I was watching someone the other day and she was just saying, well, even when I go on holiday, I can't wind down anymore because I'm thinking that would be good content, that would be good content, and it's constantly on their mind. Whereas perhaps if you're doing something as a side hustle, actually doing it is enjoyable and it isn't, oh, that would be good content, that would be good content, it would be, that would be great content. And you've got that level of excitement still where some of these, uh, maybe these YouTubers have lost a bit of that and they're, you know, they've lost their way uh, and it's no longer their passion, it's become their job. So. That aside, they've also got things to think about, such as are you paying your taxes? How often do you have to do that? Do you need a management company to sort out the sponsors and things that are coming in? What's the uh, ordering process like? Do you need to be looking to only use, uh, I don't know, Canon cameras or Nikon cameras because you've got some form of sponsorship deal with them? There are all these little things that come alongside actually following and chasing that passion of yours. But, Hey, you'll probably all agree, it's been a little bit down and negative so far. But so let's think about when is it the right time to turn your passion into a career? Well, let's first off start with a little story about a uh, gentleman over in America who was really passionate about old gas pumps of all things, you know, or petrol pumps to the uh, people in the UK. And he'd collect the old globes and the light up advertising and the old humongous pumps and he just had created lots and lots of them and managed to collect them all. And eventually started looking at selling some of them and found out there's a market out there, although it's a small market. Now this chap has gone on to create a store. He's featured on some TV shows that air on Dave in the UK and I'm sure on many channels in America. And he's got a business that now turns over $1 million annually. And that's from advertising and selling gas pumps. 
it's uh, amazing what you can do if you're passionate about something and you find the market. So you're going to do it, you're going to take the leap of faith, you're going to try and make your passion into your business, but what do you need to consider things? Well there are five points that I want to go over first with you. So number one is market demand. So it's really important that you do your research to understand whether or not there is a demand for the services or the products that you want to provide and to understand whether there's enough interest in what you're looking to do to see if it will be sustainable for your business. Number two is financial stability. Now you've got to be realistic. Is the business that you're looking to set up, are the products that you're looking to sell or the services that you're looking to offer, are they going to bring in enough money that will allow you to sustain your lifestyle, build on it, to support your family and so on? It's really important that you've got a positive response to that question. Number three is personal goals. Now you need to understand what you want to do with your passion, what are you actually looking for? Is it really something you want to turn into your full-time living or actually does it work really well as just a bit of a side hustle that's going to bring you in some extra money that allows you to maintain a lifestyle you really enjoy while following your passion? Number four is time and resources. Now it's really important, again, I keep saying this, to understand the amount of time and resource that is going to go into it's taking your passion and turning it into a business. Have you got the uh, financial backing behind you to allow you to create all the products before you've managed to sell anything? You know, are you aware that a lot of business take two, three, four years before they start to turn a profit? Can you accept that kind of uh, financial instability in the first few years? Is it something that's going to be able to work for you? Have you got the time? You know, can you just jack in your current job and really have a go at this. And number five is around risk tolerance. So you've got to understand that not every business is successful and there's a certain element of risk and uh, a lack of control in some circumstances as to whether you're going to be successful or not. Now you've got to understand whether this is actually big enough of a risk that it should stop you from proceeding or actually if you can tolerate that risk you're aware of what you may have to put aside to tide you over for a rainy day if things don't work out the way you want them to. Ultimately, of course, the decision is yours of whether you want to turn your passion into a business. And, you know, some people have had extraordinary successes with this. And certainly, if you do do that, then I'm going to be with one of your biggest fans and one of your biggest supporters, and I hope you make a huge success of it. But really, you need to consider the five factors we just went over to understand whether the uh, risk and benefit which outweighs which, are you happy to move forward, are you happy to take that risk because actually the benefit is out there. Have you already got a huge amount of interest from family, friends and other people that have heard of the products and the services that you provide because there are real opportunities certainly in uh, 2020, 2023 and the years coming up to really make something. But please don't just jump into it blindly, make sure you, sure you do your research, make sure you understand what it is you're getting into because you could make a huge success. So there are a few companies who started as a passion project and have gone on to make millions, if not billions of dollars. And I'd, I've heard of all of the ones that I'm gonna to mention to you, but I didn't realize that they'd all started as uh, passions projects as such. So the first one is Ben and Jerry's. And I think I knew that this one had come from somebody's passion, but I love ice cream, everyone loves ice cream. And they thought, let's go out with some really crazy flavours. Let's come out with some odd ideas and give it different names. And it really took off. And we all know they make a huge amount of money. The second was Etsy, the online marketplace, where actually I think I bought the majority of my Christmas presents from this year. And it feels good to use Etsy because you're kind of giving to small individual creators. But the people that built that platform because they wanted to bring more like-minded people together well, they've gone on to create that huge business, which is all over the globe now. Now, the third one, and the one that surprised me the most that it was a passion project was Starbucks, which was formed by three friends who were passionate about coffee. And I agree, coffee is something to be passionate about. So you just look at the size of those three businesses and, you know, they've really taken off. I mean, so with all that said, if you want to turn your passion into your career, then 
I wish you nothing but good luck. I'll be keeping my fingers and my toes crossed for you. I really do believe you can do it if you want it enough and you put in the research beforehand. Now my last video was all about habits and how to develop good habits that will push you on to successes in the future and that can help you with your pro project and help bring your passion into your career. So if you want to learn more about how you can use good habits and make great success from them, then please check out the last video linked above. Thank you for your time everyone and have a fantastic day.